Hi, this is Vicki Gopher Parnell, and I have come to share a dream that I had. 8524. I started journaling it at 606 a.m. It is titled The Narrow Path Dream. I pray and ask that you take this to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. You try and test it and prove all things. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 And hold fast to what you know, meaning don't let go of it. When you're told something and Jesus Christ has showed you something and it confirms out, you've tried and you tested it and it's something he told you, revealed to you through his word or something, there's less chance of you being persuaded or being misled. In a minute, we're getting ready to pray. I'm supposed to pray this as I go, and I do not have it open because I was doing a little research before I got on here. So please bear with me. I apologize for that. I'm going to be praying the Ephesians 1. All right. I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to go into the prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. I do pray, though, Father God, there's no retaliation, retribution, or anything or such like of your knowledge and in your existence. For this video or anything else I've done in your name, this ministry, my family and friends, in Jesus Christ's name. All right, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, and I'm going to insert where it reaches everybody that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Actually, that's how you read it. But when I prayed over myself, I had the eyes of my understanding in, in that. And I pray this now almost every day. Or at least say Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, before I read my Bible. Lord, I pray that right now over every man, woman, or child that you would call to, to read or to listen in any part of this ministry except the enemy, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray just the opposite for them. And I give you praise for that, Lord. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you. Your word says in John 14, 13 and 14, that whatsoever I ask in Jesus Christ's name, that he will do it to glorify you, Father God. And that whatsoever I ask in his name, he will do it. That's because I'm a child of God. And when my life lines up with your will, being obedient, walking and doing all I can with your help, can't do it on, I can't do it alone, then you will answer it. It's like Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Lord, all throughout your word, you say to ask and you shall receive. If we don't ask, we will never receive. Yes, you can read our thoughts and you can read our minds. But to be obedient, we are to ask. So, Father God, I come before you and I ask that you would step in and that you would answer this prayer according to your will. Jesus Christ, I ask this in your name for you to do it. Hallelujah. And I stand and I say this prayer, issue this prayer, pray this prayer in the power of Jesus Christ's name. That has been given to all his children. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and over all the power within me, and nothing shall by any means harm you, showing us that we have legal rights. Legal authority over the kingdom of darkness, over Lucifer, over Satan, over their kingdoms. But for us to be able to operate and activate into that, we can't have any binding agreements with them. So, Father God, lead your children 
Open the eyes and ears of your children and help them, Lord, if there's any sin, any unknown covenant, anything, any agreement. Holy Spirit, bring it up. In Psalms 139, it says, search my heart and try my thoughts. Do that to us. Search us and try us. And if there's anything that's in our life, I ask in Jesus, excuse me, I ask in Jesus Christ's name that you would reveal it and that you would give us the strength to let these things go or to take care of it. Every person, place, thing, being, circumstance, and such like that you have knowledge of Father God has been placed into my life, this ministry's life, in any part pertaining, directly or indirectly, and in my family's life, I come in to leave right now in Jesus' cross name and not return. Hallelujah. I cancel and break and reverse and renounce all witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, if I've made any kind of covenant, known or unknown, that I'm not aware of, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break and renounce it, pleading the blood of Jesus. And that's in your knowledge and your existence, Father God. But I understand you give us time and a space to repent. But every sin has an, a reaction, action and reaction. So, Father God, help us to repent quickly in Jesus Christ's name. Now, Lord, when I say I break and crush and renounce and rescind all witchcraft, that is because every kind of attack done spiritually has to be done through witchcraft with the demon attached. Whether it stays permanently or not does not matter. Jesus Christ has all power. All witchcraft, all attacks are broken in the name of Jesus Christ, whether they're physical or whether they're spiritual or combined. All power is in the name of Jesus Christ. And in the name of Jesus Christ, using my legal authority given to me by my saving king, using his saving ring, which is his mighty name, I command this and decree this and ask in Jesus Christ for you to do it so Father God will be glorified. All the demons in these attacks I do bind in the name of Jesus Christ, standing on Jude 6, and I cast you into the abyss still bound. And I ask for grievous torments and heavy burdens, and that you would be held there until the time you're thrown to the lake of fire. In Jesus Christ's name. But again, Father God, in all that I pray, your will be done. You adjusted, however, I will not tie your hands. I now will not pray a specific way that's going to interfere where you rearrange things or do something. You do what's best for all. Your will on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, every fallen angel that's issued any kind of order against us, if they're still needed, I pray that they all be bound and thrown to the abyss just like these demons standing on Jude 6. But you can get any out if you need to, Father. All operators, all witchcraft, all witches, all such like things that are demon-possessed, all people, all hybrids, all and I say hybrids because most of the time they have de demon DNA in them and don't even realize it. So, Father God, I bind all that in the name of Jesus Christ, including the strong man of where I'm at, over Tennessee, over the United States. I bind these, Lord. Binding does not mean I'm binding it to that place. It means, binding means to restrain, to restrict, to keep them from moving, to immobilize them. And I do that on every way possible that you know of God, whether it be through thoughts, through eyesight, through hearing, through moving. Wrap them in them chains, Father God, and only let them loose when you say so in Jesus Christ's name. I give you glory and I give you praise. And I again, I say, Holy Spirit, don't let me speak a word. That's not from Jesus Christ or Father God or you. In Jesus Christ's name, don't let me utter a word that's going to cause somebody to fail. You stop me if I start to get in myself and keep me humble at all cost. Open our eyes and ears to the truth. In Jesus Christ's name, your word says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And according to the word of God, which cannot fail, which cannot lie, because the original, and I'm talking about the original, is up in heaven. Jesus Christ yourself. It says that we, your sheep, know your voice, and another we will not listen to. And it says we hear your voice. John 10, verse 4, 5, 14, and 27. 
I stand on your word in Jesus Christ's name. Send this forth according to Isaiah 55, 11, Lord. Your will be done in all things. And Holy Spirit, if I've missed anything, please, I ask for mercy, Father God, and that you fill in the spots. With the prayers I've already prayed today, just reactivate them, please, in Jesus Christ's name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bear with me a moment. Thank you, Lord. Now, I have released a, a video earlier today already. So this dream most likely will be released tomorrow or the next day. Today is 8 5 24. My nose is itching. Hallelujah. Okay, now I, I dreamed this dream last night. Got up early, spent some time with the Lord because it just just it's just a dream. It's I've had many dreams, you know, but this one was really different. I was gonna read it. You pray over it, you try it, test it. And if it helps one person, then it's worth being shared. It helped me. But again, I'm just going to be obedient. I dreamed again Jesus Christ, and I asked sweet Holy Spirit to bring it back to my memory. Let me see it again fully in my mind's eye, as you have done for me so many times before. These are the verses I'm standing on. John 14, 26, 1 John 2, 27, and Isaiah 55, 11. I was taking a journey to a far off land that I was trying desperately to reach. I was taking this journey on foot, walking the whole way. I had been prepared well for this journey. I'm wearing a huge backpack on my back and comfortable, sturdy, well-made hiking boots on my feet. Everything I need had been provided for me. All I had to do is the walking. During the journey, sometimes there were other people that walked with me because they were heading in the same direction, in the same direction I was. But mostly, I walked this journey alone. After walking a little ways up the distance, I began to have an uneasy feeling that I was being followed. I can only describe it as a sense of that I wasn't alone as I walked. And whoever was there didn't want to be seen. They were hiding in the shadows, as we say in the South sometimes. Although I had a backpack with me, I carried on my back. I never stopped to rest or took it off. I never set it down but carried it nonstop the whole time I was walking. I walked both day and night, excuse me, at night times or dark time. My son used to call it when he was still a small child. I walked with the light that I wore upon my head. I never took the, this off my head either. It was like a hat made of army green two inch wide straps that held the light securely in the front middle. The straps reminded me of the sturdy straps that, that's found on some types of luggage. This light I knew must never go out. It was both battery operated and solar powered. So if for some reason, the sun's direct light, excuse me, sun's direct light couldn't get through to keep it charged. I had an endless supply of batteries that could be replaced without taking it, taking the hat off. That went with this light I wore on my head to keep it shining. As I continued to walk, I had learned to keep a watch on the light's strength. And when it would begin to slightly dim, I would always try to get into the sun's direct light or pull out a battery from my right pocket and change it quickly. Because if I didn't, the way the road I was taking often became drearier and darker, causing me at times to stumble and occasionally to fall. I hadn't realized at first 
The battery should last me a lifetime. I had focused this I had found this out while traveling as other people would journey in the same direction and would walk with me. Some would turn back, but I kept walking. There was inside of me an urgency to reach the location I was headed to. When others had re excuse me, when others had randomly joined me, joined with me in their traveling as they headed it seemed in the same direction as I was traveling. I was given the not so friendly advice to use the battery inside the light until it needed to be changed instead of changing it at the first sign of its dimming. What had occurred from heeding such poor advice was the end result of trying to walk under the heavy foliage with a barely enough with barely enough light to see instead of a bright light that lighted my way to see clearly without tripping or falling it was also in these such times that the uneasy feeling of being watched and followed increased soon i began hearing noises too of another person or something following me or us depending on if I was alone or someone was accompanying me at that moment in time. But most didn't hear these noises as I did. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. All right. Soon the noises became like growls and snarls. I could hear, but I never saw anyone or anything at this time of my journey. Yet I knew they were in the darkness, and if I would turn, if I would turn and face the darkness with the light shining from my head, piercing it, the growling and noises would stop with or without other people around. Some would hear the noises in the dark while others said it was my imagination or foolishness. I didn't care what they thought, nor would it stop me. I was determined to reach my goal, my destination, with my light fully on, with it shining as brightly as it possibly can be. Once I get to where I'm going, I won't need my own light. It will have its own light source for all who come and live there. The more I walked, and the closer I came to my destination, the difficulter the terrain. I had entered a heavily foliage covered mountain trail that only let the sun rays shine through in bits of, of places. In times like these, I would rely heavily on my supply of endless batteries. The road I was traveling on seemed more like a simple, narrow path now. But I could tell from looking at it that many other people have walked this way before me, which encouraged me. Yet I couldn't help wonder, couldn't help wondering how many actually made it. It was getting a lot harder to climb up the, the mountain because the path had begun to steadily increase upward. Everything around me had darkened without the full presence of the sun shining upon my surroundings. I noticed that whatever was following me was getting closer and bolder because of the sun's absence. Yet I kept walking forward, even though at times it actually felt like whatever it was in the darkness was trying to grab my pants leg or pull occasionally at my backpack, my backpack. As long as I kept my light fully on, and not dimmed, they couldn't do any more than this. Excuse me. I have to have water. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sorry, got the wrong side. Even 
though at times it actually felt like whatever it was was in the darkness, was trying to grab my pants leg or pull occasionally at my backpack. As long as I kept my light fully on and not dimmed, they couldn't do anything any more than this. I trudged on but abruptly stopped when I came to a point on the mountain's face that was made of rock. It looked more like one very tall rock with no way visibly to climb. I was disheartened and discouraged for a moment. Had I traveled all this way, walked all this long hard miles to not be able to reach my destination? For the first time, I really felt like sitting down and removing my backpack to rest for a moment, possibly a few minutes while I pondered what to do. But then I remembered my light. With it, I could examine this rock and the path closer to see how to continue, because if, if others could make it, then so could I. Removing my backpack wasn't really a good idea either. Because if I remove the weight of it after I'm already accustomed to having it on, then when I go to put it back on and carry it, the weight may feel heavier than before. I should never take it off until I reach my destination. This way, too, there's no chance of me losing anything that's packed for me. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. After choosing to keep going forward, I set in with a determined mind to give to not give in to my feelings. I really, excuse me, I realize now that while I was contemplating what to do, the sunshine, its rays had somehow broken through the thick tree, the thick tree coverage. I went and stood under its warm rays with its inviting light. While standing in the stream of light, I remembered to also put a new fresh battery into my headlamp. These batteries were awesome. A new fresh battery into my headlamp. Then placed the old one back into my pocket. I don't know how it worked, but I would put the old batteries back into my pocket, but they always came back out fully charged. Somewhere along my traveling, I had gained a stick I used for walking, but I do not recall the exact moment in which I did. It just appeared as the road or path became more treacherous, and I was able to use it for many things, like keeping my balance or moving objects out of my path's way. I walked up the rock wall as soon as the sun's rays faded to examine it closer. I walked up to, excuse me, to my surprise, hidden by the trees, bushes, and other foliage was a narrow path, barely seeable, that ran right next to the right side of the massive sheer rock wall. <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for the water. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Lord. There was only one crevice I could see in the rock, and it ran in the direction of up and down. I looked back to the narrow path and quickly headed toward it. Suddenly, I heard snarling behind me. When I turned my head to see what it was, the light from my hat... <coughs> I view this in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. The light from my hat lit the area up. As it did, I saw glimpses of shadowy figures that quickly darted out of the light to hide in the dark shadows once again. What, whatever it is, or they are, they're getting bolder. Yet they hate the light and its brightness. Excuse me, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 
Okay, Lord. I turned quickly back to the path ahead and began walking as fast as I could. Soon I broke into a broader area and was able to pick up more speed. But I never went so fast that I lost sight of the precious path that I now knew not only led me to, not only leads me to my desired destination, but also to safety. Whatever the shadowy growling figures are that's been following me since I set out on my journey, they're getting bolder the darker my surroundings get. I begin to hear the sound of running water, like that of a creek nearby, and the path seemed to be heading toward it. Within a few minutes, it opened up into an area that looked like a scenery that people would desire to paint. It was beautiful. The creek turned out to be running in the direction of the path, and there was an opening in the trees that allowed once again the sunlight to shine down into the location by the creek. Within this area of the sunlit portion was a fallen tree. I looked at it all for a moment and chose not to sit down, but to stand in the direct sunlight and let it flood over my being. It felt like a warm caress, and I welcomed the light. Suddenly, I heard voices behind me. There, to my surprise, is another group of four people apparently heading the same way as I am. One lady exclaimed, Oh, what a beautiful place! It is another, it is another one said. A man spoke up and asked, Maybe this is a place we can rest. A little rest won't hurt us. The two women began agreeing and immediately took off their backpacks, much like I was wearing, and laid them on the ground as they sat upon the felled tree. The man who had spoken followed suit, taking the remaining spot on the log, and then asked, You weren't going to sit here, were you? You're just standing in the sunlight. Boy, I'm sure glad to see it. I nodded my head no as I looked at him looked at them, wondering would they be able to continue their journey since they had settled down so comfortably on the tree. Another man with them, an older man, said quickly, This is a bad idea. You need to get up and get your packs back on. We've got to keep moving. I told you we're being followed, he said. One of the ladies sitting on the log spoke up. Randolph? If we're being followed, then why are you the only one hearing the noises? I don't know, he replied in concern, but they're real. I looked at them still standing in the sunlight and simply said, I'm being followed also. My understanding is all who try to reach this place will be followed. But why, the man on the log asked, we're hurting no one. Sure, most everyone else we know didn't choose to come, but that's our choice and theirs. What difference does it make anyways, he said matter-of-factly. Boy, it feels good to sit here, doesn't it? One of the ladies spoke up. The other asked, I wonder how much farther there is to go. Randolph replied, we have to reach the end of the path. The grand city will be at the end, the city of brightness. So we must continue until we get out of all this overgrowth that keeps trying to block out the sunlight. We've got to keep going, he said quickly to his group. I smiled at them, then turned to begin my journey once again. Hey, Randolph called out. I never thought about getting a walking stick and using it along the way. May we join you on your journey, he asked. I replied, if you are going the same way, then we can walk together. But I will not be taking long periods of rest. My standing here in the sunlight is bringing rest 
to my body. I heard one of the ladies let out a groan and then said, Randolph, we've got to rest. He looked at her and said, There's a difference in resting and getting comfortable and being unprepared. If something happened right now, all three of you resting on that log would jump up and run away, leaving your, break, your backpacks filled with everything you need to live, to survive. Now, I'm leaving and going to walk with this lady, he said, referring to me. You can either pick up your backpacks and come with us, or you can stay here and follow the path yourself and come later. The man on the log looked at the two women sitting beside him and asked, What do you think? Should we rest a little longer or go ahead and get our backpacks and begin walking again? I don't know, one said. But the one lady said, but the other cut in, interrupting her. What if something is really following us? Then slowly... Excuse me, they slowly got, got off the, the felled tree and picked up their backpacks from the ground and put them back on. We started walking on the path when I noticed now Randolph has a walking stick. He also has a helmet with a light like mine. He saw me look at it and then glanced at the other three, which didn't have on the strap hats with the lights like we did. He spoke up and said, their lights went out, and they kept them on for, for a while. But when they met up with me on the path, they soon placed their lights inside their backpacks, hidden away. They said they had no way to recharge them. Odd, I replied. I find that being in the sunlight charges it as good as the batteries I have. When I keep placing them inside my pocket and pull one out when the, the light first shows signs of dimming, it comes out fully powered. This happens each time I use them again. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I have batteries too, Randolph replied. And when I asked the trio here where theirs were, they said they used them until they ran out. And because they didn't think they would need them or that they could be recharged, they cast them aside. Oh, that's not good, I said. Because there's times when the trees and overgrowth seems to be almost completely, but not quite, black out the sunlight. This I know, Randolph replied. We continued walking and again the surroundings began to darken as we journeyed further along the path. It would have been difficult to see if we hadn't had our lights with us. Suddenly we came upon a ravine about four feet wide, and the only way to get over it was by crossing on a fallen log. When I looked forward to the other side, I could tell the path definitely continued on the other side. We've got to cross it, I said, realizing there was no other option for us to proceed. We can't cross on that, one of the women cried out. We'll have to wait until daylight. Randolph patiently cleared his throat and said, Inside the denseness of the mountain foliage, we can't tell right now if it's night or day. So there's no use in waiting in hopes light will peek through. But we don't have our lights, the man who had sat down on the log with the two women earlier cried out. You go ahead, Randolph, the man said. Then you can toss me your headlight hat, Randolph replied quickly. No, I don't think so. What we can do, though, is cross over the lady first, then I will follow. Then we can shine our lights. We can shine our lights by facing the log. That way we can still have some light. That way you can still have some light to cross over. Come on, Randall. Randolph, excuse me. Let me have your light and you can use the lady's light. 
or you can walk behind us with the lady in front. And how do you expect to see if I'm behind you and your bodies are blocking the light from being seen? Wait, one of the ladies cried out. We still have our strap light hats. You're fully charged still from the sunlight. She said that the sunlight or batteries charged her light. Give us your batteries, Randolph. The other woman spoke up and yelled, Hey, lady, share some of those batteries in your pocket. I looked at the woman who yelled at me and said softly in reply, I cannot. They were assigned and given to me. Randolph spoke up. Same, same here. Mine were assigned to me for my light when I headed out. You should have kept your own batteries and kept them charged, as you should have known. I spoke up. Each person on departing on this journey are given everything we need to get there. So everything we were given was necessary. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Suddenly, I heard a growling and snarling. So did Randolph. By the way, he reacted. But we're not the only ones. All three of the other people's eyes who were with us lit up in fear. The man cried out, What was that? Before anyone could reply, out of the shadows came ravenous wolves charging to attack us. Then to my amazement, my wooden stick I used to help me in my walking turned into a flaming, hallelujah, whew, a flaming, brilliant sword. My backpack took on the form of a wooden cross. My strap-on light hat became a gleaming, shining helmet. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My attire became armor, gleaming, shining, shiny armor. I looked over at Randolph to see he had been transformed as well. The other three were only clad in various pieces of the armor. Only it wasn't shiny, but dulled in places. The wolves turned into fierce and terrible shaped demons. As Randolph and I began swinging our swords, I heard these words from the heaven. The weapons I give you are spiritual, daughter, and they are mighty, not carnal, not of this world in which all strongholds of the enemy can be defeated and fight and can be defeated. They can be made to flee when you stand and fight in my name, Jesus, Jesus Christ. I have given you everything you need. When I'm inside you, my light shines out of you. Your batteries I provided to you represent my Holy Spirit, my power in you. That when you use it, they, will, then he will refill and recharge you. Your light. Recharge your light. My Holy Spirit makes you stronger, a stronger light in this world to be seen by all. The sunlight, daughter, shows how spending time in my holy presence will energize you physically and spiritually again, causing my light, your light, to shine brightly for all to see. I give rest to my children. The use of a walking stick represents my holy word that teaches and aids you how to stay on the narrow path to my heaven. And once you learn to follow its ways, it also, also becomes a mighty weapon to utilize with my name to defeat your enemies. Your backpack represents the cross each of my children are supposed to carry. For all you'll ever need in this life can be found in me by those who choose to carry their cross daily and not only when they feel like it. Your light in your strap hat represents and shows you how if you will follow 
me the light and walk in my path in obedience you will always be able to see i will be your light but you will also be a light to others those who choose to pick up their cross and walk in obedience to me will understand the power of my name the power found in the price i paid for them and will have the faith in me to know that i will supply all they will ever need physically and spiritually if only they believe only believe daughter it takes faith to move a mountain it takes faith to accept me into your heart and for me to wash your sins away it takes the same faith to walk in obedience knowing i shall light your way when you believe the impossible can be done in my name daughter it can it can be done. And then I woke. Thank you, Lord. I want to make point out something that the Lord did not bring up at the end. The three people trying to get the batteries and the light represents the five foolish virgins. Five foolish. There's ten virgins. Five foolish, ten wise in Matthew 25. Here are the verses. Hebrews 4, 12. Romans 12, 21. Scott, excuse me. Romans 12, 2. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. Hosea 14, 9. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 5. Ephesians 1, 20 through 23. Luke 9, 23 through 26 John 14 15 Matthew 25 1 through 13 Ephesians 6 10 through 18 John 14 23 Matthew 7 14 Deuteronomy 5 31 1 John 3 21 22 John 8, 12, 1 John 1, 6, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, Hebrews 5, 14, Revelation 21, 22 through 24, Philippians 2, 19. As you take this dream, you pray about it, you try it, and you test it. In Jesus Christ's name, as you're commanded to do all things. When he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether, whether they be of God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. When you study that out, false prophets, false prophets, false evangelists, false pastors, false singers, false anything. But he tells you, try the spirits. He doesn't say, would you please do this? He's instructing you. It's up to you to be obedient in Jesus Christ's name. And the Lord wanted me to do something. Holy Spirit, lead me. For those of you that really love the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're trying, but you still feel like you're not good enough, or you keep feeling like, I cannot live a holy life. I cannot do this. There's no way for me to reach His standards. I want to talk to you, Mom, about King David, little David. David Please be a turn about the last one page. When you look at David, you're going to see that he was not perfect. In just a, sh a few short things shown, he was just like all of us. In 1 Samuel 25 through 7, 1 Samuel 21, 2 through 3, 1 Samuel 21, 13, 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 27, talks about him committing sin. He lied. He lied to Jonathan. Had Jonathan lie and say that he, to give Saul, because he feared for his life, a, a story, a cover story, lie for him, tell him that he, he was gone to, what was it, Lord? 
lied about his absence, that he was with his family when he was really out in the field hiding because he knew Saul wanted to kill him. He lied out of fear, but still, he, he lied. He lied when um, he was fleeing to Ahimelech, the priest. He came in, told him he was on an urgent mission for King Saul when he was fleeing for his life. Told him he had men with him and he didn't to get more bread. And then told him he was in such a hurry that he didn't have a sword, so he took Goliath's sword and Ahimelech let him. And if you'll read this, the which David admitted in part that he was indirectly responsible for the re repercussions. Ahimelech, all of his family was killed. He was killed except for one son and other things, and he was a priest. Why am I saying this? We also see in 1 Samuel 21, 13, he worked in deception. He faked his madness again out of fear because he fled to the Philistines. He fled in fear to his own enemies, and they recognized him. So he changed his countenance. Then we have in 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 27, the whole chapter, where it talks about David saw Bathsheba. Why was she taking a bath on, on the roof? Some say it was deliberate. Some said it was because purification reasons. Regardless, instead of him turning his head, he took more than one look, which led into sin. When lust is conceived, it turns into sin. He took her, slept with her. She became pregnant. So he committed adultery. She was married. And when he couldn't hide that sin, they could not hide the fact that she was pregnant, and he repeatedly tried to get her husband to stay with him, calling him into the city from the war, trying to get manipulate him, so that's witchcraft, trying to manipulate him to sleep with his wife so he could pass the child off as, his, as her husband's. And when that failed, he had Uriah put in the very front line to ensure he got killed, he was murdered. Why am I saying all this? <coughs> Excuse me. In all these flaws, David knew to repent. He did not repent immediately after what happened with Bathsheba. Excuse me. And we know this because the child was born, was already born when Nathan the prophet came to him and told him and confronted him and was then told that the sword would never leave his, his house. Did he repent? Yes, he repented. That's the key. David repented. This is just a small thing also, which this has been changed now in the Bible. Pray about that. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. Supernatural things are happening, so the Bible will fit in the one world religion. But it used to say that in the last chapter, Second Kings, excuse me, Second Samuel chapter twenty-four, the first verse, the Lord was angry with Israel, but Satan moved upon David then to number the people, and it says God did. And when you search that word out, it says by seducing, by enticing. That's not God. It's not one of His characters. But in that, he numbered the people, which God had forbidden to do. So again, he was in disobedience. In all these things, and murder and adultery were, and at this time, death sentences, but God spared them. He knew to repent. And in the end, after he died, this was spoken of him. 1 Kings 14.8. And this is God talking. And rent the kingdom from the house of David. Talking he'd given the kingdom to Jeroboam. His wife had come to see the prophet because their son was dying. And rent the kingdom from the house of David and gave it to thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David who kept my commandments and who followed me with all his heart to do that only which was right in mine eyes. 
He repented and God forgave him. And David still pursued the Lord, even though that we, we are in a sin nature body. We can't do this without Jesus Christ's help. So understand, don't look at yourself through the eyes of the world. Look at yourself the way that God sees you. He sees you as something priceless and precious and something that is worth sending His only Son to pay the awful, horrendous cost so you could be redeemed. And if He's going to do that, then He's not going to abandon you. But He will reprimand he will do all it takes to try to draw you into obedience. And obedience, not in the fact that you're a slave as far as some people call a slave to Jesus Christ, but walking in obedience is choosing to do what you're told to do because you love that person. It is a choice. But when the Lord sets rules and guidelines down, it's for your good. Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Who are called according to His purpose. There are many things that we go through that we caused ourselves by our decisions and our actions and our reactions. It's like that pebble that's thrown in the water and it ripples out. And then we, we end up like David falling on our faces and crying out to God, he still had to pay the consequences. David's child died. David's and Bathsheba's died. The one where they committed the act of adultery with. Consequences of sin. But David repented and God restored him. We're not to judge one another. We are to love one another. We're to pray and to help one another. You're supposed to pray for your brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. You're supposed to pray and try to reach the lost. We are called to reach the lost first and foremost. What is the first thing it says in... Uh, it's in Matthew's also, but in, in Mark. I like Mark because it gives a little more detail. Mark 16. Go ye out therefore into all... Nature, I'm gonna read it. The first thing he tells us, not the last, not the second, the first one. And it's spread the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, something everybody can do. I can't speak. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mark 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What's he saying? Go reach the lost. Share the gospel. We are called, every one of us. So, I got to lean up my nose. I'm so sorry. In Matthew 28, when the Great Commission here, Verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Clarifying, hey, I'm, i got all power now. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Okay. And this says, Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Teaching, preaching, sharing the gospel. Out of all the things we do, that's the most important. And that's what most people do not want to mention. They're afraid of offending their family. They're afraid of offending their friends. They're afraid if they speak on the job or if they were to pray before the meal on the job, they might lose their job. Who are you trusting in to take care of you? Jesus Christ or the government or, or that paying job? It's time to take a stand and be what we're called to be. I am thankful for every meal, and I pray before every meal wherever I'm at. And I'm not being, I'm just saying, we are called, told to bless our food. We're called to not be ashamed of Jesus Christ in any place we're at. Now, people don't care for you talking about God. 
But when it comes to Jesus Christ who paid the horrendous price so you could have that relationship with God, then it changes. Why is that too? Here's something the Lord told me recently. Because when they say, God is love, which God are they referring to? They didn't clarify. Or when they say, God loves me, or I love God, who they made is their God. But when you put the name Jesus Christ in there, there's no doubt. And Jesus Christ is the name that hell doesn't want mentioned. Jesus Christ is the name these secret laboratories and the these underground facilities all forbid you to say their name, his name. Why? There's power in it. Even when the enemy speaks it, there's power in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when Father God said do Gabriel his name shall be Jesus. Some people want to say Joshua. Some want, His name shall be Jesus, Yeshua. He will be the Son of God. He's only the Savior of the world. The Lord of all. The enemy knows which Jesus you're talking about. And he knows whether you have faith in that name or not. And he knows exactly if you believe and operate and move in the Spirit of God like we're called to do. And if you're not, he knows that as well. So remember, before you got saved, you did not have to clean yourself up to go meet Jesus Christ for him to, when I, I mean saved, being saved is a continual process. Because you accept Jesus Christ, you're saved, but you have to still work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning, that does not mean it's by works you're saved. I've had so many people say, you are teaching a false stuff. It's in the Bible. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning, you make sure you do your praying. You keep that relationship with Jesus Christ. You have to do those works. But you're saved by grace and faith. I have to pray to keep my relationship with Jesus Christ strong. I have to pray to keep the enemy at bay. I have to take time and read the Word of God and study. I have to take time to praise and worship. And I do it as the Lord leads. And each is different in the way. So you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, you work out your walk with Jesus Christ. But it's by grace you're saved through faith. All right, take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Those of you, I'm going to say this one more time. You did not clean yourself up before you came to Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit drew you with all your mess, with all your troubles, with all your brokenness, and picked you up and healed you and saved you and redeemed you, made you you, know, you made him your Lord, the Lord of his life, of your life, excuse me, Lord of your life. What makes you think he's not going to help you the rest of the way? When he loves you with love beyond our comprehension, Jesus Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. If anybody's moved, it's you. He is faithful until the end, Deuteronomy 7, 9. Pray about this. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Remember to pray for one another. Pray for your enemies. Bless them. Forgive. Don't let bitterness take root. These are little traps and triggers of the enemy. Bitterness grows into hatred. Hatred is murder. Okay, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now's the time. Or if you've backslidden, it's time to come home. If you're running from the Lord Jesus Christ and you still feel that call in your heart, that tug or that pull, that heart beating really fast, that's the Holy Spirit drawing you and convicting you. You need to stop running. You need to stop running. 
Turn around and he'll be standing right there waiting for you. Arms open wide. Ready to love you unconditionally with all your mess. If you'd like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my heart and wash me clean with your blood. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess and believe you are the Son of God who gave his life on Calvary, that you are both God and man. I confess and believe that you rose again on the third day, and you're coming back again, and you are my Lord, my Redeemer. I confess you now, here and now, that you are my Lord. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I recommend if you don't have a hard copy Bible, get one. I have the KJV here. There's a lot of things coming. Get the word in as quick as you can. I do recommend you start with John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament. Because then you will know exactly what Jesus Christ is and what he's done for you. The whole word of God is beautiful, but ask the Holy Spirit. Because when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, his spirit comes in. His Holy Spirit. Ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Which translation do I need? Teach me. Teach me the true, the truth of this word. And he will. John 14, 26 says he will. All right, if you have a prayer request or you want to contact me, I'm only available through the Telegram, My Lovely Jesus Ministry group page, channel. The links, the link to that is usually posted under the videos or on the website. There is also a Facebook that is not open for prayer requests or it's not opened. The Lord has said to only do the telegram right now, but we are getting the prayer request in there and that way other people can pray as well. And we're seeing prayers answered and I thank God for that. We have a God that serves. I'm praying that the Lord would open up the eyes of his children to many of the ways and tricks of the enemy. I had a circumstance myself. Lord, do I share that? I had a circumstance myself where I had to leave where I was at. Most of you know I'm not in my 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 real my apartment that I that I rent. I'm still renting it, but I'm not there. But in this learning because the enemy was trying to keep me there. They put every person, everything in the way, trying to get me to drain my funds. Why am I saying that? Because the enemy will do whatever they can to keep you in bondage and keep you where you're at. You may be in a situation where somebody you thought was your friend but really is an enemy. Witchcraft, they do that all the time. You know, you've got this money saved up it's for a, a purpose and a reason. You're finally getting ahead, and all of a sudden they have this dire need. This is my friend. I go to church with her. She's the one that's always been there for me. And this is just an example. She's also the one sent to make sure you use that money on her so you stay in bondage. It's another device that I've I've dealt with personally, repeatedly. That's why I pray also very much over the money that's sent into this ministry. And no matter how dire the situation sounds, I live for Lord Jesus Christ. Some people we've helped. Do I help them again, Lord? Or do I need to step in? Or do you want me to refrain? Because the enemy will do whatever they can. When you understand the enemy really is an ancient evil that's how i'm going to call it an ancient evil that's been breeding hatred for us since the garden of eden 
It puts more understanding to he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to destroy you. If he can destroy you financially, you're in bondage. You can't go nowhere. You can't do anything. If he wants to destroy your family, your church, your nation, your schools, we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. I said that because there's a lot of you financially struggling. So even when it seems like a dire need, even with some family members, lay it for the Lord Jesus Christ and try and test it. Try and test everything. Because God supplies all your needs, but we're still supposed to be good stewards on what we have. All right. God bless, say, under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, I caught on to that trick a while back, and um, I asked the Lord to confirm it, and he put somebody that's supposed to be dear. Somebody dear to me was, and um, he said, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and you're going to know that, yes, this is definitely what they're doing. And yeah, it happened. I, cause I, I was like, Lord, I just can't. This is this hard to believe, not can't. This is really hard to believe. I knew, knew the enemies on site were doing it, but the other people in my life, too. But, again, I've been praying Luke 8, 17 over my every area of my life. And when God shows you something himself, and he takes you to Scripture, and then he says, this is going to happen, and you try and test that. Okay, Lord, this is what you said. I'm trying to test it. Okay, God, you cannot lie. And it happens after you try and test That's why I say, get your answers from God yourself. That way nobody can sway you. All right, God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ always. Bye-bye for now.